What's up everyone? So today is a really fun video because I get to tell you about the statistics for the Yale School of Medicine um, for the class that started in 2018. So I started in 2017. I made a video for the stats of my class. I'll link it right up there. Uh, but these are the stats, including GPA, all of that good stuff for the class that came in in 2018. So this is also not the class that just started, the class that started last year, actually. These are their stats. So this, these are always just fun videos because it's always fun to look at the makeup of the class, fun to see where they're coming from. It's also fun to see the numbers uh, because I know everyone cares a lot about the numbers myself included. So without further ado, the admission statistics uh, for the incoming class of 2018 uh, at the Yale School of Medicine. All right, so the biggest thing, there were 4,968 applicants who applied of those, 687 were interviewed, and of those, 269 were accepted, which gives you a, um, a brief idea that we accept a lot more than the people who actually decided to come here. So we accepted 269, but the incoming class is 104 people. So it just goes to show you that everyone who's accepted may not necessarily come here. Um, of the people who were accepted, um, 134 were women and 135 were men. Uh, and then eventually from that, 50 ended up matriculating who were women and 54 ended up being matriculating who were men. So it's about a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, which is really interesting because my class was not like that. My class, as I said, the, the video I'll link down below and also it was up there earlier, um, was a little bit lopsided in terms of males. So next up, we have international births and citizenship. So this just refers to people who may not have been born in the United States. For example, I was actually born in India. Uh, so based on all of that, there's actually 23 countries represented in the class that came in in 2018. And that includes people who have um, citizenships in China, Ethiopia, India, Japan, Korea, Nigeria, Pakistan, Sudan, uh, Singapore, Vietnam, Canada, and Argentina. So it just goes to show you that not everyone is born in the United States, which makes sense. Uh, aside from that, the international citizens who are U.S. permanent residents, there were six of them. There are also international citizens who are not permanent residents, aka not green card holders, uh, and so there's eight of them. So I know we always get questions about international students. There are international students here at Yale, and they do, need not have a green card or even citizenship in the U.S. to apply. The undergraduate colleges, so this is always another one that's interesting. This is basically colleges from which more than two people came. So every college I'm about to say had more than, had two or more people in the class that started in 2018 representing it. For example, um, Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Duke. So I just mentioned all of those. Those at least have two people from each of those schools represented in the class. So Cornell, I said Duke, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, MIT, NYU, Northwestern, Princeton, Stanford, UCSD, UC Represent, U Chicago, UPenn, UT Austin, University of Toronto, University of Western Ontario, Ontario, University of Wisconsin, Washington University, and Yale. So those were all the colleges from where from which there were at least two students who ended up in the class that started in 2018. Uh, in terms of the total number of undergraduate colleges represented in the class, there were 55. So in a class of 104 students, there were 55 colleges represented, which goes to show you that almost each of those colleges, uh, first of all, either had more than two or had one. And the ones that had two or more, I just listed. So some of those might just not have two. They might actually have three or four. For example, I know in our class, we have three people from Princeton, um, and I think maybe five or six from Harvard. Um, okay, so... That's that. Now let's move on to the general information. So first year students with advanced degrees. So I think this usually refers to people who have a master's or a master's of some sort of even a PhD. So there were actually five students in the incoming class of 2018 who had some level of an advanced degree. How many MD PhD students are there in the class that started in 2018? There's 19 of them. So 19 of the 104 students that started in 2018, 19 over 100, that's almost 20%. Uh, 20% of them are MD-PhDs. Um, and the people who were deferred enrolls, so there's a lot of med schools do this, and you should always ask. Some med schools will actually allow you to defer your enrollment. So let's say you got in 
2017, they might allow you to defer, defer your enrollment to 2018. And that's exactly what this was. So there's three people in the class of 20 that, that started in 2018 that had deferred their enrollment. That means they got in in 2017, but they deferred their enrollment to start in 2018. Um, and so, yeah, to review, five first-year students with graduate degrees, 19 MD-PhDs, and three people who deferred their enrollment. Now let's talk a bit about gap years. And I know gap years are always really interesting because people are always like, should I take a gap year, should I not? Uh, so in the class that started, as I said, in 2018, the number of people who came straight through and did not take a gap year was 34. That means 70 people did take a gap year or more than one year. So the people who took only one year, there's only 29 of them. So as I said, 34 people did not take any gap years, 29 took one gap year, and 41 students in the class of 2018, the class that started in 2018, took more than one year. Uh, so they enrolled after two or more post-college years. So just because to show you that gap years um, are becoming more and more common. I believe in my year we didn't have uh, as many people who took two or more post-college years, but I could be wrong. All right, and I saved the best for last. I know everyone's always interested in the GPA and the MCAT. Uh, but before I get to that, the mean age at enrollment, this is mean, not the median, mean, which means you add up all the ages and divide by the total number of people, uh, which in this case would be 104. The mean age at enrollment was 23 years old. That doesn't necessarily mean the majority of the people were 23. That doesn't mean that uh, 23 was the most common age. It just means that if you add up all the ages and divide by 104, you'll get 23. But the age range of the class that started in 2018 is 20 to 28 which means the youngest student was 20 and the oldest student was 28. So next up, the GPA. So the GPA for the first year students, the median GPA, which means 50 percentile, 50% of students had a GPA higher than this and 50% of students had a GPA lower than this that ended up coming to Yale. Uh, and that was 3.89, which just goes to show you 50% had a GPA higher than 3.89, 50% had a GPA lower than 3.89. This is not the average, this is the median. Make sure you understand that one because before I had talked about the mean age, this is actually the median GPA. Uh, the median science GPA was 3.86. So the median overall GPA was 3.89, but science was 3.86. And last but not least, the MCAT. And as I said, this is also going to be the median. So the median MCAT is going to be 521 for this class. Uh, and if you want to break that down by cars, the median cars section score was 129. Uh, the, psych, the psych section was 131. The biological section um was also 131 i don't know what bffl is but basically the last two was 130 for cpbs and 131 for bffl i took the old mcat so i don't know what those mean but i'm assuming one of them is bio and one of them is physics but i wouldn't know so let me recap all of that so the median cumulative gpa was 3.89 median science gpa was 3.86 median median mcat section medium mcat score was 521 with a breakdown of 130 as the median score for CPBS, 129 as the median score for CARS, 131 as the median score for BFFL, and 131 as the median score of PSBB. One of you is smart enough to tell me what all of those mean, but I didn't take the old MCAT, so I'm unsure. All right, so now you guys have a brief idea into the class that started in 2018, uh, and hopefully gives you a better idea of, um, of uh, the makeup of the university, and hopefully encourages you to come here, and hopefully doesn't discourage you, because if there's anything I've learned, it's that uh, numbers don't define you, and even though these numbers can be a little bit daunting, um, I've consistently found people who have defied it, um, and so I, I'm the last one to say numbers uh, mean anything, but I know people care about them, so that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.